Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to tackle one of the least important problems facing us these days, and that is what's the best camera for just grabbing and taking with you to film lifestyle content, or if you want to take it with you to family things and just grab some little thing, a vacation, whatever. Now I'm on the Osmo Action 4 right now that I was quite excited to get. I was very much let down by the Action 2's form factor. I didn't bother with the 3 either. I still stuck with my original Action 1. I'll be doing some tests with it again too. But the image quality on it was always just lacking. So, so far, I've just barely scratched the surface. I'm happy with this. But we're going to compare it with my last go-to before this, which is the Pocket 2. Now, I really like my Pocket 2. I've got some pet peeves with it. The dynamic range I don't like. I don't like how fragile it is. I don't like that it doesn't look any better than my cell phone most of the time, but it is nice. It's fun to use. My question is kind of, is this dead now? Like, is this completely replaced? I think it might be, but we're going to talk about that. So I'm going to try and compare the Action 4 versus the Pocket 2, and I got one other one I'm going to add in there. It's not really the same, but it serves the same purpose. So I'm going to get to that in a minute. Now, I apologize for this thing, but I'm trying to get things the same size in the frame. Most of the time I see comparisons like this, they have the cameras even, and you know, the subject is larger in one than the other, so I want to get rid of that. The other thing that everybody does is they squeeze it on the screen like this, full picture. We're not doing that. We're going full size, pixel to pixel, side by side. We're going to split it like this. You can see now, okay? That's the way I'm going to do this and all of these, because it's the only way you can actually tell what it looks like. It doesn't do you any good if it's this big. I don't know why they do that. Anyway, this is the rig I've got, and that explains why you're seeing this, but it's the best that I've got now. I could have got a separate tripod, but I want to actually be able to carry this and test the Z-axis up and down and see how it looks when you're walking with it. And here's the other competitor. This is the ZV-1. The original ZV-1 with this heavy, newer, wide-angle lens on it. So we're going to have to reach well across the car for this, I think. There, I think that's I think that's similar. So we're on the ZV-1 over here, okay? Pocket 2 right here, and the Action 4 right here. The audio is coming through the Pocket 2's included wireless mic. Now when I'm looking at image quality, I want to see how the dynamic range is up there. I want to see how the colors look. We're going to be doing the camera's log profiles here, so we're in D-Log M on the Osmo Action 4, we're in d like on the Pocket 2, and we're going to be in S-Log 2 on Sony. And we're going to bring that up so that the picture looks about the same in the scope side to side, and we get about the same colors. What I'm looking for is, how does it handle the highlights, the dynamic range? It's a cloudy sky, but there is some blue. Can you see the blue in the Osmo Action? Can you still see it in the Pocket 2? And can you still see it in the ZV-1. How is the clarity of the face? Now obviously everything's going to be in focus in the pocket and the Osmo. So that's not necessarily a bad thing though because when you're just grabbing a camera it's kind of nice to not have to worry about the focus. The problem is the picture's never been any good. I love my Osmo Action 1. It's just so much fun to use. It's way more fun to use in the pocket honestly because it's, it's heavier duty. You don't have to worry about it so much. You just grab it, push the button and go. Plus it's wider angle and this is even wider than that but the picture is not so good. There's noise even in bright pictures. The colors are kind of weird. The blacks look red and purpley. It's just, it's not cool. Now, as far as sharpening goes, I have not touched the sharpening on any of these. Pocket 2 does not have a sharpening option. The Osmo 4 does, but I've just left it default because I want to kind of compare these as much as possible. The ZV-1 is also on default, I believe. I didn't bother with the standard picture profile because realistically this would all be blown out no matter what. The only chance of keeping any highlights on the ZV-1 is to use S-Log or HLG or something. So have a look at it and write in the comments what you think. I'm really curious about this, but this will give you an idea. What can you get out of the Action 4 with a static shot like this, fairly high dynamic range scene? Distance from the camera is about not quite an arm's length. It's significantly further to the pocket and the ZV-1 is on the other side of the car. So now we're going to try some walking. I'm really curious how the stabilization is going to look in the Osmo Action 4 compared to the Pocket 2. Pocket 2 is great like this. It's not so great up and down. And I'm curious, is the Action 4 going to be a lot better? The Osmo Action 1 
is pretty good all around. But I, from what I've tried so far, the new Rocksteady is significantly better. I do not have Rocksteady Plus because I don't want it to crop in anymore, and I don't have Horizon balancing either. This is just kind of apples to apples. The Pocket 2, of course, will balance the Horizon better, but I want to try and get the most out of each camera sensor that I can. The ZV-1's got all stabilization turned on, active or whatever it is, it's the, it's the full one. It should be reasonable, but I think these two are going to win for sure that way. Okay, so now we're doing some walking. I've got the Action 4 right here I'm on at the moment. And here's the Pocket 2 next to it. Seeing lots of sky, so it'll be interesting to see how the dynamic range is. Got these pretty close to me actually, not very far out at all. So here's the ZV-1, full length on the selfie stick. So we are going to be a little bit different size in the screen, I think, but I also want to make sure I get past the bin on focus distance on the action. So I'm going to try and hold these all fairly even so we can get this all in one frame. We're walking on the action four right here, pocket two right here, and the ZV-1 over here. So how does this look for walking on fairly level surface? This is definitely tricky trying to keep everything all in the same frame here. I must look pretty weird, but there's nobody around. Who cares anyway? And now we're walking facing away, looking at the scenery. How does the dynamic range go here? It looks, in the ZV-1, it looks pretty white in the sky, but it's hard to tell. The Osmo action looks great. I can't see the pocket because it's still facing the other way. All right, well, that should be enough for you guys to digest. Please let me know in the comments. What do you think? Which one looks better? Which one is more stable? Which one would you want to use, given that you can get all these for relatively close to the same price, be it maybe new for this one and used for the other ones? And how's the audio sound? I've been pretty happy with this. I wish the action is something like that, though I guess it does with the DJI mic. One issue with both the DJI cameras, though, that is not gone with the Action 4 is when you use an external mic, the first couple of seconds, the level is much different. So I always have to go check one, two, check one, two. The first couple of seconds is way louder than the rest of the track. So you can't just turn it on and start talking. You can, but you have to do a test for a few seconds at first. And the level will just be up here, and it'll come down like that. And then that part on, as soon as you go into the editor, you just cut that first part off. You can normalize the rest of it. But that is kind of a quirk that they still have and don't seem to show any signs of fixing. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Give me your feedback down there. I'm really curious to hear from everybody. And uh, have a great day. We'll see you again sometime soon.